In this video, I will be discussing section 9.2, which begins on page 562 of your textbook, and it covers multiplying polynomials. So just like with adding and subtracting polynomials, we can set up these problems either vertically or horizontally. So let's just go ahead and look at a ton of examples. In example one here, it asks us to find the product of 2x cubed times the quantity x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Alright, so um, the way that this is set up, there's only one term that I'm going to be multiplying by this entire four term polynomial here. So I'm going to go through a process that looks like distribution. All right, so using my distributive property, I multiply every single term by that 2x cubed. All right, and showing my work neatly, I used a lot of parentheses here. And then since I have a product of powers, I do need to add those exponents. All right, so that 2x cubed, add a three onto all of the exponents of the x's here. And so I end up with 2x to the sixth, plus 6x to the 5th, minus 4x to the 4th, plus 10x cubed. All right, so in this uh, particular example, we are finding the product of uh, two binomials. So I'm going to go through the distributive process. However, we typically call it foiling when you have something that looks like this. So um, make sure to distribute. I always work left to right. So I will be distributing that x to both terms in the right uh, set of parentheses. And then I'll be distributing that negative 4 as well. All right, so step one, write subtraction as addition of each polynomial. All right, so I changed that x minus 4 to an x plus negative 4. A lot of people aren't necessarily going to do this, and that's all right. I typically skip this step. All right, step two, make a table of products. This is one additional approach here. So um, you can write the entire um, polynomial that you have on one side and then the next polynomial on the other side. So I still have x minus 4 and 3x plus 2. And then we kind of use this Punnett square idea and we multiply. So 3x times x, 3x squared, and then I'm going to do that for the entire table. And then I can take that table and I can add all the terms together and combine my like terms and get 3x squared minus 10x minus 8 because I added that 2x and that negative 12x together. All right, that is another approach. Find the product. So these are your guided practice. So I'll go ahead and go back here and you can pause and then uh, check the final solution here. So I distribute that x, which means I'm adding 1 um, to my exponent here. So I get x times 7x squared, 7x cubed, and then 4 times x is 4x. All right, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can FOIL. If you distribute each term and use that box method, you should end up with 2a squared plus 7a plus 3, all the way in the end. All right, and then you can FOIL again, or use the box method. And you should get 4n squared plus 19n minus 5. All right, it's up to you to show that work and to bridge the gaps. I went about it a different way for every single problem. So in this next example, as you might see, um, the first polynomial that I have, b squared plus 6b minus 7, is no longer a nice, neat um, two-term binomial here. It is a trinomial. So um, this process is just going to be a little bit longer, not necessarily more difficult. All right, so if I were to find the product, I would go through 
um, a number of steps. So first, I'm going to multiply every term. You can multiply, I normally distribute from the left to the right, um, but since the right set of parentheses here, the 3b minus 4 is only two terms, it'd be easier to distribute two terms um, to the left instead. So multiply every term by negative 4. All right, so um, this is us lining it up vertically. This is another approach. So I'm going to multiply every term by negative 4 and get negative 4b squared minus 24b plus 28. And then my next step is multiplying by 3b and line that up vertically as well. All right, and you can line all of this up together. It doesn't necessarily have to be two, rewriting it two times. All right, but when I distribute that, I get, I should get, um, they already have that negative 4b squared minus 24b plus 28 lined up for us. So when I distribute that 3b, I need to make sure that I line it up, shift it to the left, so that our terms line up according to their degree. And so then I take those two polynomials and I add them together. I add the products. Alright, so step by step, that's exactly what it should look like. And I would get 3b cubed plus 14b squared minus 45b plus 28. All right, so you've now seen a couple different ways. You've seen horizontal, horizontal method, you've seen a box method, and you have now seen a vertical method. All right, so find the product horizontally. So specifically in this example, they want you to you know, use your distribution in a horizontal method. So write the product, use your distributive property, all right, so you are multiplying every single term by that 4x minus 3. You might do each of those separately. All right, and so then uh, you're going to need to combine your like terms after you do all of that. And you get 8x cubed plus 14x squared minus 19x plus 3. So the FOIL pattern and I've been referencing this if you can't remember what it stands for. It does stand for first, outer, inner, last. So if I have two binomials, I take the first terms in each of the binomials and I multiply them. I take the first term in the first binomial and then the last term, uh, the second term. So those would be my outside terms. Then I take the second term in the first binomial and the first term in the second one. Um, this would be my inner terms, and I multiply them, and then I take the last term of each, and I multiply those, and then I add those all together and combine my like terms. All right, so another example here, um, using that FOIL method. I always draw my arrows when I'm using a FOIL method or when I use distribution in general, no matter um, if it's a binomial, trinomial, or larger. All right, and so they show you exactly what you should get for first, outer, inner, last. And they label it nicely for us. So multiply the binomials using the FOIL pattern. This is our last example. So if I were to use the FOIL pattern, um, I would first have a 3a times a, that's my first. My outer terms here are 3a and a negative 2, so I'd multiply those. My inner terms are 4 and a, and then my last terms are 4 and negative 2. So I would r multiply all of those, and then I would combine my like terms to get 3a squared minus 2a minus 8. Alright, so here are your guided practice. Find the product. Go ahead, feel free to pause the video. You can do this horizontally, vertically, or um, you can just use your distributive method at, in any comfortable way. Alright, if you do it correctly, you should get x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x plus 2. 
Next guided practice. Pause the video. And if you distribute and multiply correctly and combine your like terms, you should get 6y cubed minus 11y squared plus 13y minus 15. And last one here. Um, I would recommend here that you use FOIL. And if you do that correctly, you should get 4b squared minus 13b plus 10. So if you notice um, on the left side of the screen versus the right side, when you're multiplying, uh, the degree of your polynomials is increasing. So I'm taking a trinomial and a binomial here where the degree is 2 and then the degree is 1 for um, each of these pieces. Degree is 2 and then the degree is 1 and that becomes degree 3. And then the highest degree here is 2 and this is degree of 1 so it becomes a degree of 3. So it kind of works together here when we're multiplying uh, to get a, you know, product that makes sense. Alright, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask at any point. Alright, so we're moving on to our last two examples here. The dimensions of a rectangle are x plus 3 and x plus 2. This is actually a pretty common uh, type of question that you would see on the ACT, where they don't actually give you the side of a rectangle, but they say, um, you know, it's this value um, plus 3 units, or this value plus 2 units, or 2 times, so instead that would be 2x instead of x plus 2. So which expression represents the area? So in order to find the area of a rectangle, that is base times height. So I would need to multiply um, x plus 3 times x plus 2. Alright, so my solution here, length times width or base times height, substitute in those values, and then FOIL and multiply. And combine your like terms, and you should have gotten x squared plus 5x plus 6, which was b. Alright, and if you have a graphing calculator, you can always check um, by plugging two different values in. Um, into line 1, you can do x plus 3 times x plus 2 using your parentheses, and then you can double check in line 2, x squared plus 5x plus 6, and you would notice that those graphs are the exact same. Alright, and example 7 here, skateboarding, you are designing a rectangular skateboard park on a lot that is on the corner of a city block. The park will have a walkway along two sides. The dimensions of the lot and the walkway are shown in the diagram. Alright, so it's 45 feet wide and 33 uh, feet long. And then that walkway is x feet wide, I guess. Alright, so write a polynomial that represents the area of the skate park. So if it was the entire lot here, it'd be 45 um, by 33. But I need to take away that side walk portion. Alright, so write a polynomial. The length is going to be 45 minus x, taking away the sidewalk and then the width is 33 feet minus the sidewalk again. So to find the area, you're using the same formula, length times width, substitute in your values here, and then you're going to need to distribute or FOIL, and then combine your like terms, and there is um, your polynomial. Typically you're going to write it as x squared minus 78x, plus 1,485 in standard decreasing uh, degree there. So then step two, if I go back to my original question, they want me to find the area of the park if the walkway is three feet. All right, so pretty realistic question here. Um, how wide can I make, you know, my sidewalk? I want a nice large sidewalk, but I don't want to take too much area away from the skate park. So we're going to need to substitute 3 in for x and evaluate. Alright, so um, no matter whether you wrote it like 
root your polynomial, like 1485 minus 78 X plus X squared, or in standard form, when you substitute in, you should get 1260. So the area of the park is 1260 square feet, if the sidewalk is three feet. All right, and here's guided practice. The dimensions of rectangle of a rectangle are x plus five times x plus nine, uh, which represents the area. All right, so why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and see what you get. If you foiled correctly, you should have gotten C. All right, um, please keep in mind you need to combine your like terms in order to get a uh, fully correct solution. And garden design, you are planning to build a walkway that surrounds a rectangular garden as shown. All right, so pretty similar to that skateboard park. The width of the walkway around the garden is the same in, on every side. Write a polynomial that represents the combined area of the garden and the walkway. So if you look at it, you've got a 10, you've got a 9, and then you've got some x's. So are you adding or subtracting? Write a polynomial that represents the combined area, combined area, combined area of the garden and the walkway. You're going to be adding. So if you did end up getting 4x squared plus 38x plus 90, you would be correct. How you need to do that is if we go and look at our problem, it should be x plus 9 times x plus 10. All right, um, x plus 9, I guess, for the height there, and x plus 10 for the base, or the length and the width. And then when you combine your like terms, that's what you get. Which I'd actually like to... Um, you know, take some time to work through this example together um, and reword what I was saying. All right, so um, it's not x plus 9. You need to add on the additional x here um, for the entire length and width. So it is helpful, especially if you guys have paper, to draw this out. So this entire um, length here is x plus 10 plus x. So this is 2x plus 10, not x plus 10. And the entire width here is going to be x plus 9 plus x, or 2x plus 9. So when you write out the entire area, it's 2x plus 10 times 2x plus 9. All right, and going through my foiling process, first term here, that's 2x times 2x. All right, which is going to give me 4x squared. And then my outside term gives me 9 times 2x plus 18x. And my inside term gives me 10 times 2x plus 20x. And my last term gives me 9 times 10, or plus 90. So when I combine my like terms, I get 4x squared plus 38x plus 90. Alright, and that's how they get the solution there. Um, I need to correct myself. It's not x plus 10 times x plus 9. You need to add on the additional x in both directions there. Alright, so if you were to go back and look at part B, find the combined area when the width of the walkway is 4 feet. Alright, the answer should be 306 feet squared. So you're just substituting in that 4 for the x and working it out using correct order of operations, starting with parentheses and exponents first, and then multiplying and then adding. All right, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me or uh, send me a message on Google Classroom.